Here we are using laboratory information to calculate the solubility product constant of a slightly soluble salt, potassium hydrogen tartrate, also known as potassium bitartrate. This is the structural formula for potassium acid tartrate. You will see that the potassium on one end takes the place of one of the hydrogen ions in tartaric acid. Tartaric acid has two that hydrogen ions that can be reacted. If we substitute a potassium ion for one of those hydrogen ions, we get potassium acid tartrate. On the other end of the molecule, you find the other hydrogen ion. So, potassium acid tartrate is still acidic. The salt dissolves, and we assume that any salt that does dissolve also dissociates into cations and anions. We'll call this KHT. KHT is one of the few potassium salts that is not very, very soluble in water. But what does dissolve will dissociate. This is the solubility product expression for KHT. The potassium ion times the hydrogen tartrate ion concentrations. Now there is no way to directly measure these concentrations, for instance, by absorbance of light, because neither of these ions is such that it will absorb visible light. So that's not an easy way to get to it directly. There is, however, an indirect method of finding the concentration of the hydrogen tartrate ion. And that takes advantage of the fact that the hydrogen tartrate ion is a weak acid. And of course acids react with bases. This acid will react with the strong base, sodium hydroxide. As you can see here, the hydroxide ion reacts with the hydrogen tartrate ion and gives us water and tartrate ion. This reaction is essentially complete because the water has such a small dissociation constant. If we then titrate a saturated solution of KHT with standardized sodium hydroxide, something that we know the concentration of to the, say, three-digit accuracy, it will tell us how many millimoles of hydroxide are needed for a given volume of saturated KHT. We do this by multiplying the milliliters of sodium hydroxide by the molarity or millimoles per milliliter and the millimoles of sodium hydroxide at the equivalence point will be the millimoles of KHT that is dissolved in the water at that temperature. Then we just divide the millimoles of KHT by the volume of KHT saturated solution that we've titrated. That will give us the molarity of the saturated potassium hydrogen tartrate solution. Here's the calculation from the molarity of the saturated KHT. Previous work, that is what we've done up till now on this slide series, gives us the molarity of the saturated potassium hydrogen tartrate solution. That's both the tartrate, hydrogen tartrate, and the potassium ion. They are equal to each other because they both came from the potassium acid tartrate. That means if we know, and we just do now know, the molarity of the saturated potassium hydrogen tartrate solution, then we simply multiply that by itself, that is square it, and that gives us the KSP. We square the molarity of the saturated potassium hydrogen tartrate, and that gives us the solubility product constant at that temperature. So you saturate the solution, you collect the filtrate after you filter out the solid that's left over. You then titrate a given amount of that to equivalents. Just to repeat, you stir 1.2 to 2 grams of KHT into distilled water.
and you and your stirring goes for 20 minutes preferably with an automatic stir you then take that saturated solution and filter out any solid which you can throw away you collect the filtrate in a dry flask so you're not doing anything to make that less concentrated you draw out with a volumetric pipette 25 milliliters of the saturated KHT solution and you put that in a flask you add phenolphthalein and titrate with a standardized 0.05 molar sodium hydroxide solution and when you see a persistent pink and very very light pink that stays around there after 30 or 40 seconds you don't see any change that's the equivalence point then the volume of the sodium hydroxide times the molarity of that standard sodium hydroxide solution is equal to the millimoles of sodium hydroxide you've added. That's equal to the millimoles of KHT that it reacted with. You divide the millimoles of KHT by the 25 milliliters of volume you took out of the filtrate. That's the molarity of the saturated potassium hydrogen tartrate solution. You then square that molarity. You'll give me, given the accepted value of KHT's KSP for your lab temperature that day. Determine the percent deviation of your result from the accepted value. And if instructed, you'll collect solubility product constant values from the rest of your class or classes, and you'll run statistics, including getting rid of any outliers before you can get an average potassium acid tartrate KSP.